The following is a Broken Bones production. So, why do this project? I think um, Jiu-Jitsu is a sport that I've personally been involved in. And it had always been my ambition for some time to resume my photographic work revolving around martial arts, which is something I've always been extremely interested in. Uh, I previously photographed amateur boxers for a college project when I was doing my art foundation in preparation for going to university. And for a long time, I had in mind that I wanted to photograph martial arts clubs. I'd made inquiries about doing this, but never gone ahead and done it. So I started to practice a club called Hive in West Didsbury in Manchester, where I found training very enjoyable. And eventually one day when I didn't feel like training and went down to watch, I took my camera with me and photographed one of the sessions and the martial arts coach was very happy with the pictures and started to use them on his social media. And I started to wonder about what the potential really was with these photographs. What happens when you start to combine them or animate them, which doesn't entirely make sense given that I could just buy a video camera, I could buy a 4K video camera, film it, job done. But I was kind of influenced by the old judo manuals where you could learn martial arts through step-by-step -step pitches. And what I'd wanted to achieve was by slowing it all the way down, could I isolate certain points in the action and demonstrate the techniques through photos rather than video because to the untrained eye just watching guys train it's not entirely clear what they're trying to achieve especially when both guys are going for attacks at the same time it can just look like a bit of a spaghetti mess so one of the contacts i made was with adam Adshead, who owns and coaches factory bjj which is the photo shown here and he was very gracious in allowing me to go down and photograph multiple times uh, the last session i photographed was immediately before lockdown i chose to use 35 millimeter film i shot um cinestill 800t which is a tungsten light film used for artificial studio lighting. And I'm pretty happy with the results, to be honest. I think the thing I like the most about the pictures is how much action there is and how I managed to isolate some of the submissions, try to photograph the exact point where a guy's about to tap out from the submission lock. I was also very lucky that uh, Judo Olympian Sophie Cox was there, which is a big thing for me. It's the first time that I've ever photographed what you might term a sports celebrity of any kind. I think one of the great things about this being an open mat was that there was people from various clubs and also while people were taking break rounds, you can see them socializing, hanging out, talking. This gives you an idea about the social aspects of the sport, that it's a great way to make friends having, it's a great way to make friends through training. The bonds that can be created when you're giving each other feedback on your skills and efforts and say you went for a particular submission that didn't work you can advise them on how to get you better next time um a lot of these shots are pretty scuffed as in they didn't come out well at all certain shots I was just unlucky because of the depth of the mat and it only being accessible from one side effectively. Um, 
there's certain shots that don't really work because I'm simply not close enough to the action and there's other ones where the autofocus let me down and there's also ones where the action was really high so there's just too much motion blur you know more than I would be comfortable with using um, I shot all of this at 1 60th of a second which really is too slow a shutter speed you need to be shooting a lot higher for sports of any kind really but I don't know I think I like just that little bit of motion blur it means that you can see the action rather than seeing the motion you can get a sense of where the pressure is being applied some of these shots aren't too bad at all some of them are very chaotic and it's not entirely clear where the viewer should be looking um, some of them are shots taken in a series where there was one photo in particular I found was a tremendous amount more successful than the other ones some of the shots I don't really like because there's too many shoes or bottles and it's and the other shots are just so much cleaner than those ones there's not really any distractions for the viewer and it's a lot easier to interpret what it is you're supposed to be looking at 